Hello, hello, bonjour, bonjour. My name is Colbertine, host of the Colbertine Report, your monthly news with a French flavor. What's really worth talking about in the US and, of course, the rest of the world? I promise you bodacious comments. You do not know what bodacious means? This is a good reason to watch. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, merci, thank you, merci, merci, thank you. Please take a seat. Welcome, Mission. Happy to have you on the Corbettine Report. What matters in the US and the rest of the world? February 2015. In the US this month, National Mourning for Liberals. John Stewart announces his departure from Comedy Central. And February, the month of Hollywood egomania. In the rest of the world, my views on Islamic State, Greece, and North Korea. Finally, my new segment, Le Mot, translation, the word, as recommended by my French friend, Stéphane Colbert, last month. February 10 will remain a devastating date for me and all liberals in the US. Our famous political satirist John Stewart announced that he will leave Comedy Central later this year. John, I am so sorry. I called you a swearing machine last month, but I love you. I love your wit. I am in shock. Huh. Who will keep in check Fox News, CNN and Arby's when you're gone? I was already grieving Stéphane Colbert, and now you? I guess I will have to find a way to replace both of you. Moving on, nation. The media and anybody with a TV were intensely focused on two major events in February, the Grammys and the Oscars. Well, not really the events themselves, but all the drama that goes with them so that TV and magazines can keep their captive audience interested in so meaningful news. What would we become without the red carpet, the fashion shows and the endless comments on who looks better or worse? What is wrong with us? Why are we fascinated by the rich and famous of this Hollywood egomedia self-congratulating winter mass? Do we really care if some actress is wearing a Calvin Klein dress with 6,000 pearls? Are we that shallow? Okay, I'm going to try to be positive. I have to admit, it was not all shallow. This year, it seems that winners decided to challenge our society to make progress on civil rights. Patricia Arquette advocated for wage equality for women. John Legend gave us statistics. There are more black men in jail today than slaves in 1850. Gay artists urge any gay person watching the events to remember they are not alone and should stop contemplating suicide. Reese Witherspoon challenged journalists to ask women smarter questions than Who are you wearing? These want-to-be society reformers generated unprecedented traffic on social media. Millions of individuals criticized these artists who were daring to come out of their shallowness. Come on, Patricia, John and Reese. When we watch the Grammys and the Oscars, our nation doesn't want to think. The audience is in a state of a fairy tale dream where men and women are beautiful and rich and successful. They do not want to be reminded of the misery of the real world. So please, artists, when you get your statuettes, stay shallow, don't wake us up. Moving on, nation. In the rest of the world, all we keep hearing about is Greece, the ghost Islamic State, and North Korea. I have a theory. Imagine the world as a big family where countries are brothers and sisters. We all know from experience that in each family, you have your good apples and your bad apples. Well, bad apples have either not been disciplined enough and made believe they were all powerful, that's Greece and North Korea, or they have not been nurtured enough, and that's the growing ghost Islamic State recruiting all these neglected souls. As a result, you have Greece, a bankrupt older sister, who has been spending well above her means for many years and finding logic that her European siblings bail her out over and over, because she's so pretty and so full of ancient stories. After all, she invented philosophy, gods, the Olympics, pita bread and tzatziki. We all are. Then you have teenager North Korea behaving like a dangerous egomaniac who can impulsively do anything including starting World War III, unless Dennis Rodman alias Agent James Rebound did put on him some secret electronic device allowing the CIA to control his impulse remotely, who knows. Finally, the ghost Islamic State is a toddler, cutting heads left and right, stamping its feet in a temper tantrum that is reaching its purpose. Get attention. 
Unfortunately, its population is made of all these toddlers who lacked parental attention. Potential candidates are growing, as more and more parents are addicted to their cell phones instead of paying attention to their kids. Moving on, nation. My new segment, Le Mot, is dedicated to my friend Stéphane Colbert. Le Mot is French for the word. This month, my take on Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades of Grey is a bad love story. Fifty Shades of S&M with S for shitty and M for mediocre. Fifty Shades of crap not worth a penny. Fifty Shades that in comparison make me tolerate Fox News, Kim Kardashian and Sarah Palin. I give you in place of grey, my own grey. Two Shades of Grey, cat number one. And Fifty Shades of Grey, cat number two. This totals to 52 shades of grey. It is free and innocent. Enjoy. What the fur? Is it over already? Yes, it is. Nation, I wish you a great time until next month. Do not forget, if the Colbertine Report doesn't make you smarter, it will not make you stupider. <laughs>